setting the table. Amen. If you are just joining us, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, who orders our steps. And from one year into the next, amen, we are certainly uh, grateful for another opportunity to share with you on tonight. There's a word from the Lord. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, uh, we ask that you would turn to the Second Kings 20th chapter. If you are able to stand as we read God's word, we ask that you please stand. Second Kings chapter 20. Going to be reading verses 1 through 6. Amen. Amen. While you're turning, certainly want to give a shout out uh, to our music ministry, our media ministry, all of our choir members who participated all throughout the year, our musicians. Our media ministry has held us down. Thank y'all so much for your sacrifice. Thank you so much for, for coming and showing up. Amen. Let God use you uh, the way he has. Certainly want to thank uh, before we begin, the entire congregation of New Light Baptist Church uh, for all that you have done, uh, for the prayers you have prayed. Um, we're going to read a, a familiar, uh, familiar story, familiar scripture in your hearing. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible. And beginning at verse 1, it reads this way. In those days, Hezekiah became sick was at the point of death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die. You shall not recover. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Now, O Lord, please remember how I have walked before you in faithfulness and with a whole heart and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Verse 4, And before Isaiah had gone out of the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him, Turn back and say to Hezekiah, the leader of my people, Thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. On the third day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord, and I will add 15 years to your life. I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. The word of God for the people of God, you may be seated. Amen, amen. Listen, I want to go out with a bang. Amen. I want to go out with a bang. Amen. So listen, uh, with your prayers and the power of the Holy Spirit, I want to preach from the thought, I'm not going out like this. I'm not going out like this. Listen, I, I want to talk to somebody on tonight. I, I, I want to talk uh, to the people out there who are saying, preacher, I tried. In 2022, I tried. I tried to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. I did everything, God. I did everything to bring glory to your name. I did everything to bring reverence to your house. In fact, in 2022, uh, we vowed to put our house, your house before our house. Your will before our will. Your plan before our plans. Your thoughts before our thoughts. Your ways before our ways. Your cross before our comfort. In 2022, many of us, and some of you watching on tonight, tried to do all of that. Yet and still, we were hard-pressed on every side. Disease visited our doorsteps. 
locusts fed on our finances. Denial and discord drove a wedge within our families. In 2022, many of us, if we are honest, can testify the enemy tried to rob me of my peace and my sanity. That's somebody's testimony tonight. I almost went crazy. But despite all the moves and the maneuvers orchestrated by the enemy to take your life, to take my life, I came by here tonight to declare, and if you want to join me and say it with me, I'm not going out like that. That's why, that's why looking at the text tonight, if you walk with me, we see ourselves in the person of Hezekiah. Y'all know King Hezekiah. King Hezekiah did right. Did what was right. That's what the text says. He did what was right in the eyesight of the Lord. Hezekiah tried to undo everything his wicked father, King Ahaz, he tried to undo everything his father had done. He removed all the pagan idols. He took all those idols, those, those, those uh, 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 worthless idols out that they were worshiping. He reopened the temple so people can go back to the house of the Lord. He reinstated the Levitical priesthood. Hezekiah reinstituted the Passover holiday. Hezekiah brought reform and revival back to Judah, but for some reason, trouble came Hezekiah's way. It came his way. Despite he, he did all of that, and for all of that, let me go back, for all of that, the Lord was with him. For all of that, the Lord made sure he prospered everywhere he went. Yet, but despite the favor in Hezekiah's life, he still had problems. The Syrian army, as we uh, read, the Syrian army uh, invaded Judah. They tried to destroy Hezekiah's influence and the, tried to turn the people away from God. Hezekiah's life proves you can follow Christ and still have to manage crisis. Come on, somebody. You, you, can, you, can be, you can be true in your walk, but you can still run into some trouble. You can still prosper and have some problems. God promised, y'all, God promised no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But God did not promise this, that we would not receive attacks. Yeah, yeah, somebody in 2022 said, yeah, the weapon came, sure enough. Hezekiah, Judah were being attacked. And then when we get to chapter 20 on top of Hezekiah having to deal with an invasion, deal with the fact that his people were being threatened, we learn that he is deathly ill. He's sick, y'all. He has an illness. We don't know. it. The Bible is not... Uh, descriptive in detail about what Hezekiah is going through, what sickness uh, he has to endure. All we know is that the brother's sick. And Isaiah the prophet, y'all know Isaiah gave Hezekiah a message from the Lord, and that message said, get your house in order, for you are going to die. You, you, Hezekiah, you are not going to recover from this. Get your house in order. I'm tripping because if the prophet came to my house, told me when I got home, get your house in order, you're going to die. You're not going to recover from this. I, I want you to put yourself in Hezekiah's shoes. Because that, that's some news that will knock you out of your socks. To know you're going to die. God's messenger has came to you and told you, yeah, yeah, it's, it's about to be over. It's about to be over. But look at what Hezekiah does. Now, now some of us will lose it. Some of us will go crazy. Some of us, amen, grab our wallet. We're going to buy up everything we want. We're going to pull out our bucket list. We're going to do everything we didn't do in 2022. But look at what Hezekiah does. Hezekiah immediately thought to himself, okay, Isaiah, I, 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 let, let, I, I, I get what you're saying, but I'm not going out. I'm not going out like this. 
And the Bible says he turned his face to the wall and prayed. I want y'all to get that. He didn't throw a pity party. He, he, he didn't go around pointing fingers. He prayed. He didn't take his frustrations out on the people around him. He prayed. He didn't start pouting. He started praying. Imagine what would happen if when crisis came to our doorstep, imagine what would happen if trouble was in our way. The first thing we would do is turn our face to the wall and pray. Imagine how our lives would shift. Think about 2022 when the hellhounds were on your trail. What was your first, the first thing you did? Did you turn your face to the wall? And say, Lord, I need you. I need you right now. Hezekiah prayed, y'all. And the Bible declared, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be long tonight. The Bible declared God stopped Isaiah before he even left the courtyard. I say he prayed. Hezekiah was about to die. He was sick. Deathly ill. And he didn't feel sorry for himself. Instead, he prayed. And God stopped his prophet in transit to say, look, I need you to go back. I need you to go back. Tell Hezekiah This season, he ain't going out. He ain't going out like this. Your prayers, amen, can shift your circumstance. If you, if you don't get anything from that verse, that when the crisis comes, amen, if we start praying, and when you pray, and if you decide to include other people in the prayer, make sure them people believe. Make sure they're going to stand on the wall with you when you pray. Hezekiah decided, I'm not going out. I know some of us have got some bad reports. I know some of us are dealing with some health challenges. But take Hezekiah at his word. Look, look at Hezekiah. Hezekiah said, I, yeah, whatever. I ain't going out like that. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed. Beloved of God, he teaches us. His life teaches us what can happen when you put God first and prioritize his kingdom. We talk about it all the time, putting, putting God first. Well, you see what happens. See what happens. You'll see what happens in the text. And I declare in your next season, the text shows us that God will affirm you. God will affirm you. In verse 5, we learn that Hezekiah's prayer didn't fall on deaf ears. We, we, we know that God stops Isaiah in transit to tell him to go back to Hezekiah and tell him, I heard your prayer. I've seen your tears, and behold, I will heal you. What a word. What a word. Let me say that again, because somebody is waiting for that word. I've heard your prayer. I've seen your tears. 
and behold, I will heal you. That's a word for the ignored. That's a word for the imprisoned. And that's a word for the infirmed. If nobody, beloved of God, sees you this season, God will affirm you. If nobody cares about you, if nobody acknowledges the tears you cried, God will affirm you. If no one else, if you're watching, stops by the nursing home, beloved, God will affirm you. If nobody stops by your prison cell, guess what? God will affirm you. If nobody stops by your sick bed, guess who will? God. So many, I'm talking to somebody on tonight who has lacked support in 2022, who have been lonely and all by yourself, carrying all your burdens, don't have a friend in the world. I'm talking to you tonight. So many of us this year have gone neglected and been handled and treated without care. But I declare your next season, be not dismayed. I need, I need to speak to the, to the people on the night who have been forgotten and lost. Be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will. Somebody need to hear that. He, he will hear your prayer. He sees the tears you have cried. And behold, beloved, God will take care of you. Somebody wants to get healed on tonight. Somebody wants to go into 2023 not carrying that disease. God will. God will affirm you. God will. In your next season, watch this, watch this, watch this. God will affirm you. Watch this, what the text says to us. And not only will God affirm you, God will add to you. Into verse 5, into verse 5, into verse 6, God, through his prophet, tells Hezekiah on the third day, go up, Hezekiah, go to the house of the Lord. Watch this. And I will add 15 years to your life. All right, all right watch this. Verse 1, beginning, beginning, we know that Hezekiah is sick. We know that the prophet tells him he's going to die. That by the time we get down to verse 6, amen, God tells him, I'm going to add 15 years. Yeah. Just because you've, you, you've been faithful over a few things, I'm going to add 15 years. Just because you honored me and you've been devoted to me, Hezekiah, I don't care what's coming to your door. Guess what? I'm adding. God declared, I'm going to give to you something that you didn't earn. I'm going to give you something that you didn't work for. I'm going to give you grace. Somebody ought to shout for grace. I'm going to give you grace. I'm going to give you, Hezekiah, a second chance, another opportunity to get your house in order. I'm going to add 15 years. Woo. God said, I'm going to add 15 years to your life. New Living Translation said it like this. Three days from now, you will get out of bed and go to the temple of the Lord. My man's sick. But God told him three days from now, you're going to get out of bed and you're going to go to my house. And then I'm going to add 15 years. To your life. In other words, the blessing I'm going to add to your life, you can't get it in your house. I see it. I, I might have stepped on some toes. You, you can, you're not going to get it in your house. You're going to have to come to God's house. God said, You got to come to my house. Amen. I know that's a word in the COVID era because uh, a lot of people at the house waiting for the blessing. But if you look at the text, he said, you need to get up out of bed, take them pajamas off, get yourself together and come to my house. You got to prioritize my house. You can't get what you need at your house. 
Let me rewind. Amen. Three years ago, amen, we were called to the house. We had to make the house sacred. But now God is calling us out to stop being afraid of the sanctuary and come back to the house. So you can get, so God can add to your life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his right. This Bible, this ain't bland. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And God said, I will add. Somebody want 15 more years. God will affirm you. God will add to you. And finally, finally, and I'm done. And I'm done. God will aid you. God will aid you. Verse 6. God declares to Hezekiah, I'm going to deliver you. All right, so, so, so listen. God said, look, you're not going to die. On top of you not dying, I'm going to add 15 more years to your life. And on top of that, I'm going to deliver you out of the hand of your enemy. Somebody ought to shout. Because some of y'all want all that. Lord, I want you to add to my life. <laughs> I want you to get some of these nosy people out of my life in 22. I wish I had some more real folk. I, I, I'm tired of this. Some of these, I want you to deliver me, Lord. And then God said, look, I'm going to defend this city. Watch this. For my sake. And for my servant, David's sake. He said, in other words, in this season, I'm going to come to your aid. In this season, Hezekiah, I'm going to deliver you and I'm going to defend you. And, and look at what God said. God said, I'm going to, he didn't say, I'm going to defend the city for your sake. He, he didn't say, I, I'm going to deliver you from the Assyrians for your sake. No, he said, I'm going to do it for me. Watch this. God said, I'm going to aid you to show the enemy that I'm still God. You, you got to read, read it, read it. Because the enemy came in telling Hezekiah and the people, I don't know what y'all trusted in this God for. Because we done beat up on some other people. And we done took out their gods. And we're going to do the same thing to you. And we're going to do the same thing to your God. And God heard all of what that smack that they were talking about. And, they, and he said, look, I'm not even going to do this for you, Hezekiah. I'm going to do this for me. In 2023, God going to deliver you from some stuff because he's going to do it to show your enemy. He's going to do it to show the people who, who have, have talked about him in a bad way, talked about you in a bad way, that guess what? I'm not going to do it for you. I'm not going to deliver you. I'm not going to defend you. For, just for your sake, I'm going to do it for my sake. Can I close this by telling you that in your next season, the battle is not yours. Woo! Somebody ought to be set free right there. The battle is not, 2023, the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. Yeah, I need y'all to, 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 to stop. Amen. Just, just be still. Be still and know that he is God. I don't care what smack they talking. I, I, I don't care what the situation is. God said, look, I'm going to deliver you out of the hand of your enemy. Just be still. I'm going to defend the city for my sake. In your next season, I'm going to aid you. In your next season, I'm going to deliver you. I am God, and I will deliver you. So what you got to do, I'm, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Listen, this is what you got to do in 2023, y'all. Y'all ready for this? This is real simple. Let go of your pride. You ain't that strong. Let go of your pride. You can't do it by yourself. Let go of your pride. Second thing you need to do 2023, let go of your past. God said he's trying to do a new thing. 
Can't, can't you see it? God, God said, I'm, 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 I'm going to make some highways and some wastelands in your life. Can't, can't you see it? Let go of your pride. Let go of your past. And do like the saints used to do. And I'm close like, close it like this. Ask the Savior to help you. Ooh, I got some old saints who know what I'm talking about right there. Ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. And what does, the, what does the song say? And God is willing. That, that's it right there. That's it. I want y'all to take that home. God is willing. He wants to do it, beloved. He wants to aid you. He wants to do it. He said, I'm here waiting for you. It's like, I don't know why you're trying to do this all by yourself. I, I don't know why you're trying to fight the enemy all by yourself. I, I don't know why you are so focused on your own strength. But I already told you I'm willing to aid you. Here's a word on the night. He will carry you through. He's going to carry you through 2023. He's going to carry you through every day in January. He's going to carry you into February and March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. You're going to be right here tearing up the carpet. You, you're going to be right here talking about how God added. You're going to be right here talking about how he affirmed. And you're going to be here talking about how he aged you, how he comforted you, how he strengthened you, how he brought you out from a situation that you couldn't get out of yourself. You're going to be an ocular demonstration of his grace. I declare right now over the house that somebody's going to let go of their past. Somebody's going to get, get away from that disease. Somebody's going to be lifted up high. Somebody gonna have a praise. Somebody gonna let go of their pride. Somebody gonna let go of their past. And somebody gonna have a praise. Somebody's gonna say, I'm not going out. I'm not going out. I'm not, speaking over yourself, I'm not going out. Like, the, I don't know what you've been through in 2022. I don't know. What you up against in 2023, all I know, amen, that I'm going to partner in with you and pray that we're not going out. We're not going out like this. Because we got a God that's big enough. We got a God that's large enough to handle our stuff. I don't know where you are on tonight, amen. The doors of the church are open. We want to invite you on tonight. Amen. If you are able to stand, please stand as we open up the doors of the church. I know when we get to the end of the year, last day of the year, amen, 